Hi friends. So finding a lawyer can be really daunting when you haven't had any experience working with a lawyer before. So hopefully this video can be a helpful resource for you if you think you might need legal help. In addition to this hopefully being a helpful resource, I'm also making this video to celebrate and announce that I got a new job. That's right. I am practicing law at Vox Law in Minneapolis, and I am now doing family law, like divorces and custody issues, and I'm super excited. And if you've been around for a while, you might be confused as to how I could go from intellectual property law to family law. And while I've definitely been learning a lot since I joined the firm a few months ago, I did a lot of IP litigation work, and divorces and custody battles are also litigation heavy, so there is enough over overlap that I'm definitely not just like starting completely from scratch. I'm excited to be transitioning to this area of law where I can hopefully help people who are going through like really rough times and hopefully be an advocate and a guide to make it as painless as possible. So if you or anyone you know in Minnesota needs help with divorce or custody issues, I'm your gal. Minnesota only though. Okay, moving on. Let me thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes for anyone who loves learning. I honestly love Skillshare and use it all the time, so I'm really happy to be partnering with Skillshare today. I first started taking Skillshare classes when I was learning to become a YouTuber. They have a lot of really helpful classes on video editing, lighting, sound recording, graphic design, literally every skill you could need to become a content creator. Lately though, I've been exploring Skillshare classes to enrich my free time, you know, build up my hobbies. If you saw the last time that I worked with Skillshare, Skillshare, you'll know that I have been learning how to sew because I want to be self-sufficient. This time I am learning a brand new skill related to sewing, hand sewing basics. And listen, I'm someone who loves efficiency. So a sewing machine, you know, seems like a better bet if you're trying to just get things made. But I am kind of excited about the meditative art of hand stitching something. And it's taught by Bernadette Banner, who you've probably seen here on YouTube. And I find her skills and her dedication to detail really impressive. And I think there's something to be learned from taking the time to learn how to hand sew something. It's an impressive art that's kind of dying. So I'm super excited to be learning this skill and just growing in the general sewing arena. Check out Skillshare today if you'd also like to learn new skills and hobbies. And you lucky dog, the first 1,000 of my viewers to sign up using the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. Thanks, Skillshare. Okay, so if you're trying to find a lawyer, the first step that will probably be most helpful is to figure out what kind of issue you have so you can find a lawyer in that area of law. Because there are very few generalist lawyers these days, unless they're like rural lawyers, you know, like the only lawyers in town. As a general rule, it's preferable to find a lawyer with an area of focus that fits your needs as they will be more knowledgeable about the processes and strategies for handling your case. Another thing that's helpful to understand is that lawyers often focus on either plaintiff side or defendant side work. So if you're trying to find someone that will help you sue someone else for something, then you would want to be the plaintiff and you would want someone who represents plaintiffs. And if you are being sued and need help, that would be defense work. And you'll look for someone who is a defense attorney. Also, there are two different areas of law that are important to understand, criminal or civil. If you are accused of a crime and have been charged and need representation, then you need a criminal defense attorney. Pretty much any other legal issue that you might have will likely fall under civil law. Civil legal issues generally are between private parties as opposed to criminal legal issues where the state is prosecuting you. And then finally, there are different types of law firms that are helpful to understand. There are firms that are full service firms and you go to their websites and under practice areas tab, like 50 areas of law are listed from real estate to estate planning to white collar crime. Those firms tend to be large, think like hundreds to thousands of attorneys and tend to be focused on clients who are ultra wealthy or big businesses. If you have a business and or a lot of money, you could likely seek help from those larger firms. If you're an individual trying to sue your employer or your landlord or something, those giant firms likely will not be able to help you. Then there are smaller firms, either a solo attorney doing work for a handful of clients or firms with maybe five to 50 attorneys. Those firms tend to specialize in specific areas of law and can be more helpful and easy to manage if you are not a business with multiple types of legal needs. You can tell the size of a firm by going to their website and clicking around, especially in the part of the website that introduces their team. Then there are legal services, nonprofits, and legal aid orgs that do largely pro bono work, either through attorneys that they have on staff or via pro bono attorneys that work for those big law firms and then do pro bono work on the side to make themselves feel warm and fuzzy. All right, those types of orgs are great if you're low income or don't have the funds to hire an attorney and are seeking legal help as an immigrant, a victim of domestic violence, for employment discrimination, housing issues, etc. They are an invaluable resource and they are criminally underfunded. 
Okay, so in addition to the fact that lawyers don't know everything about the law and instead focus on one or a handful of areas of law, it's important to know that most of the time you need to seek out a lawyer in your area, meaning in your state, to help you with your legal issue. Lawyers are licensed by state, so if you live in Michigan and you're calling a lawyer in New York to see if they'll represent you, that might not work. If the legal issue you're dealing with has elements that are out of state, like the issue happened out of state or the other party lives out of state, then you may be able to get a lawyer from that other state. But generally speaking, it's best to seek out lawyers in your own state because they will be more likely qualified to help you and represent you. So now that you have a basic understanding of the different types of places where lawyers work and lawyer licensing, let's go over a list of different areas of law. These are specific areas that you can Google to find attorneys in your city that actually specialize in the area of law you need help with. Instead of just Googling lawyers in Minneapolis and ending up completely overwhelmed. This isn't an exhaustive list, but I hope it covers the common things you might need legal help with. First, real estate lawyers. There's residential real estate lawyers, commercial real estate lawyers, and lawyers who handle landlord tenant issues. And yes, these are all different types of law. Employment lawyers. Again, big firms tend to focus on representing the employers, the big guys. If you're an individual who thinks they may be discriminated against or treated unfairly by an employer, you'll want to Google something like plaintiff side employment lawyer or employment discrimination lawyer. Elder law. If you think you're being discriminated against based on age, or you have issues related to Medicare or Medicaid, or you or a loved one is in a nursing home and may be experiencing abuse, finding a lawyer that specializes in elder law may be useful. Estate law. This means writing wills, setting trusts, etc. Lawyers at large firms who do estate planning generally only work with what's called ultra high net worth individuals, think $5 million or above in assets, but smaller estate planning lawyers can help you with your will, smaller trusts, and to talk through the current legal implications of like, if you were to die now, what would happen to your assets and how do you want to change? that. Personal injury lawyers. These are the ones that you probably see the most tacky commercials for, but they're also some of the most commonly needed lawyers. If you get injured in a car accident or a hit and run, or if you slip and fall at a business, if McDonald's pours hot coffee on you, if you get hurt in any way and want to sue someone for your injuries, odds are that personal injury is the type of law you need a lawyer for. Immigration lawyers. If you have any questions about proper immigration paperwork, your status, getting things filed, etc., you need an immigration lawyer. Again, at large law firms, immigration lawyers tend to work with businesses who need help getting their employees the right visas and stuff. So if you're an individual, you want to look for a smaller immigration attorney that works with individuals. Or compensation law. This is if you get injured while on the job as part of your duties and your employer doesn't pay your treatment or you want lost wages paid to you, you'll need to work with a work compensation lawyer. Medical malpractice law. If you think a doctor was negligent in their care for you, that's medical malpractice. Again, large firms represent the hospitals. You want a smaller medical malpractice lawyer who represents victims. Stalking, harassment, and assault issues. While there's not an area of law this falls under very specifically, I wanted to highlight this as it is an issue that many people face. This likely falls under tort law, personal injury law, et cetera. And I've seen attorneys who do personal injury work that includes harassment and stalking issues because the law overlaps. If you can, I would find someone in your area that specialized specifically in harassment and relationship abuse, as it can be a really touchy and difficult area. And you'll want a lawyer who understands how to work with people who have experienced that kind of trauma. The Cyber Civil Rights Initiative has a list of attorneys in each state that can help with internet-based harassment. And usually those attorneys also do like in real life IRL harassment and stalking as well. You can also call local sexual assault hotlines or nationally you can call Rain's sexual assault helpline and they can help you find resources in your area as well. General business lawyers. If you want a lawyer to review a contract before you sign it and it's related to your business or you're wondering about your business formation and how that works, a general business lawyer will likely be able to give you guidance. If you're a small business, I would suggest staying away from giant law firms because they charge an arm and a leg. If you're in Minnesota, Legal Corps can connect you with pro bono attorneys if you're a small business or a nonprofit. Intellectual property law. If you have copyright issues, a trademark or slogan you want protection for, or a patent that you want to file, IP or intellectual property is the area you're looking for. I will note that if it's an invention you want to protect via a patent, make sure that the lawyer you reach out to has patent experience, as that is a highly specialized area of law. Family lawyers. These lawyers handle divorce cases and custody issues, and often also have experience with harassment restraining orders and orders for protection. Again, I'm not practicing family law, so keep me in mind if you're in Minnesota and need a family lawyer. Think. There are, of course, other areas of law, but those are the general areas I think are most commonly needed. So with all of this knowledge, you can now start narrowing down your Google searches. So instead of real estate lawyer, you can Google Minneapolis residential real estate lawyer, and that will give you better results. From there, unless you have friends or family that can give you personal recommendations, it becomes a matter of reading through the websites of the lawyers that pop up in your search. And you can also call the bar associations in your state for referrals, but by going through attorney websites, you can pretty easily get a feel for the vibe of the place. Look at the buy 
bios of the attorneys there. What types of legal experience do they have? How successful have they been? Do they often deal with cases similar to yours? Most importantly, do you like their vibe? You need to be able to trust the lawyer above all. So you want someone you can actually trust and enjoy chatting with. Often lawyers are dealing with highly technical or sensitive private matters. And usually when you're reaching out to a lawyer, it's because you have a problem. So you need someone you can trust with your problems. All right, do that. Read through websites, find a handful of attorneys you think might be a good fit. Check out their payment structure. Many, especially smaller firms, lay out their payment structures on their website. So let's talk about the different types. The most traditional type is a retainer type setup. That's where you pay them a chunk of money up front and they hold on to that money in a trust account. Then whenever they do work for you, they draw from that retainer, that chunk of money. When the money is about to run out, they let you know and ask you to re-up your retainer amount. This is basically to ensure that you're good for the money. Any money that they don't earn goes back to you once the relationship ends. And there are some really high levels and rules that lawyers have to follow when it comes to trusts and funds held for their clients. So you don't have to worry about them stealing your money. It has to be in a separate account that they can't touch. Some attorneys, especially where they're just doing smaller, less time intensive jobs, they charge an hourly rate and then just charge you at the end of the month for hours worked. This is slightly less common though. Then there's the contingency structure where an attorney says, you will not pay me a dime until I win this case for you. Then I get a certain percentage of whatever I win. Usually 25 to 40% is typical. This is common for things like personal injury and work compensation lawyers. That way you don't have to pay anything and they don't get paid unless they win, which is great, but can also lead to the ambulance chasing stereotype because they have to be juggling a lot of cases to make sure that enough of them eventually win money to pay the bills. And then some places offer a flat rate fee structure where they say, I'll handle your divorce for $5,000 flat. This can be nice to know upfront exactly how much your legal matter will cost, but it can also be an incentive for the lawyer to just get the work done as quickly as possible because you've already paid them. A lot of places offer free consultations. So you get a half hour or so with the lawyer to see if you even have a viable case and if they could help you with it and to discuss the terms of any sort of representation agreement that you might enter. Okay, so once you've figured out whether their payment structure works for you, if the information isn't on their website, you can always ask when you reach out. I would suggest gathering any and all information that you have about your case and saving it in one spot. So that could be receipts, text messages, emails, pictures, anything and everything that you have that may relate to your case. Then synthesize your story and everything that has happened into an easy to understand timeline that's specific and detailed. You'll wanna be able to come to the lawyer at your consultation and say, this is what happened to me. Here's the timeline. Here's the evidence that I have. Do you think this is a viable case? And if so, can you help me? Once you have all that information gathered, then I would reach out to the handful of lawyers that you found. In your initial call or email, I wouldn't lay out everything. I would just say, hey, I think I might need an immigration lawyer, employment lawyer, tenant lawyer, whatever. Could I schedule a consultation to see if my case might be a good fit for you or your firm? Schedule a few consultations so that you can get a feel for a number of different lawyers before choosing the one that you want, especially if you set foot in an office. But even if it's over the phone or Zoom, you'll be able to better judge whether this is a person that you can trust. When you get to the consultation, like I said, lay out your case and see if the lawyer thinks that they're the right fit. If so, ask them about their fee structure, how they expect you to pay, if at all, etc. Ask them about their experience dealing with the issue that you have. Ask them to explain the process if you were to move forward with them. What are the next steps? How long can I expect this to take? What are the potential consequences? What should I be thinking about? What is the scope of the representation that you can give me? Get as many questions answered as you can during that consultation and feel free to take notes while you're chatting. Then once you've found someone that feels like the right fit, tell them that you'd like to move forward with having them represent you. They'll then have you sign an engagement letter, which should outline the scope of their representation, as well as your duty to pay, if any, and their duties to you. Be sure to read that carefully. Once you've signed on for representation, they should guide you through the process and answer all your questions. Be sure that if you change your phone number or your address or your email address, that you alert your lawyer ASAP. Because when I worked in work compensation, that was like the hardest part was getting a hold of clients. You're allowed to check in and see how your case is going, but also know that the legal process this takes time and patience. And just because something isn't moving along rapidly doesn't necessarily mean that your lawyer isn't doing a good job. Your lawyer should, however, be explaining the timeline to you every step of the way. And if you feel confused, ask them to tell you again what your expectations should be regarding timing and outcomes. From there, your lawyer should be able to guide you through the process and hopefully it's over as painlessly and swiftly as the legal process will allow. I hope this video was helpful. I know that a lot of you have been requesting more basic videos like this, so I aim to please. A reminder to reach out to me at Vox Law if you have any family law needs in Minnesota. Thanks once again to my partner for today's video, Skillshare. Reminder that the first 1,000 of my viewers to sign up using the link in the description below will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. Thanks Skillshare. And if you like this week's video, you might also like this video where I talk all about copyright strikes on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.